many people keep me asking that they face challenges to remember functions and formulas. So what's the best way to remember them? Today's video will solve all the issues of such people. In today's video, we will see more than 15 functions and formulas through which any format can be created perfectly. Hi, my name is Vijay and you are watching Office Mom. Let's start the video without any delays. This is a blank format where we are going to use our functions and formulas. The very first thing we will see how to create drop downs. Over here, I'll create drop down for month and year. I'll go to data, data validation. From here, I'll select list. I'll click over here on source. In source, if we want, we can type manually or in case we want to take the data from any other sheet, we can. So in this example, I'll take data from any other sheet. I'll click over here and we'll be going to other sheet which I have named as setting sheet. So we have to take the name of months and name of the months are over here from January to December. I'll select this range. In case you want to select your data from top, you can. The benefit of selecting data from top, in case your data increases in future, you'll not have to select range again. I'll click over here once again and we'll do OK. So the drop down for months got created. Over here, we will create drop down for year. We'll go to data, data validation. From here, I'll select list. And over here, we will not take data from any other sheet. We will type manually 2024, 2025, 2026. In source, you can type data up to 250 characters. Now I'll do OK. And we have got drop down for our years. In the same way, we can create drop down for week off also. Data, data validation, list, source. OK, and the drop down got created. Now we will see VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP. I'll go to setting sheet. Over here, we have got employee details in two ways. In the first way, we have got employee ID in the very beginning. And in the second way, we have got employee ID in the extreme right hand side. We'll come to my format plus or equal to VLOOKUP bracket open lookup value. We will take employee code as our lookup value, comma, table array. Table array means your data. So employee data is in our setting sheet. We will be going to our setting sheet. Over here, we have got employee ID, name and designation. If you want, you can select the range, but I always prefer to select data from top. As I told earlier, in case your data increases in future, you'll not have to change the range. We'll press function F4 and the cells will be logged, comma. Now we have to provide column index number or column number. So employee is in column number one, name is in column number two, and designation is in column number three. So we have to take name and we will have to give column index number as two, comma, zero for exact match, We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. So we have got employee name over here. I'll drag this till end. After employee number 110, we have got an error because over here we haven't got any employee. I'll drag this down. And when we got employee code, our names got visible. I'll delete this. We'll click on the first employee. We'll go to formula bar and we'll insert the criteria of if error. If error bracket open will come to the end, comma, double inverted comma twice for blank, we'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. Now I'll drag this down and our any error got vanished. So to avoid any error in VLOOKUP, you can use if error designation. For designation, we can use VLOOKUP as well as XLOOKUP. So we have already seen how to use VLOOKUP. This time we are going to use XLOOKUP for designation. Plus or equal to XLOOKUP bracket open lookup value. We will take employee code as our lookup value. Comma lookup array. In VLOOKUP, we have to provide table array. But in XLOOKUP, we have to provide lookup array. We will be going to our setting sheet. And from here, we will just select employee ID and not the whole data. We'll press function F4 and the cells will be logged. Comma. It's asking for return array. So what we want in return array? 
वी वॉन्ट डेजिग्नेशन अगेंस्ट इंप्लॉय कोड और इंप्लॉय आई डी सो वी विल क्लिक ओवर हियर ऑन टॉप विल प्रेस फंक्शन एफ फोर वंस अगेन एंड द सेल्स विल बी लॉग नाउ यू कैन क्लोज द ब्रैकेट एंड हिट एंटर बिकॉज रेस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स आर ऑप्शनल विल क्लोज द ब्रैकेट एंड विल हिट एंटर नाउ आई ड्रैक दिस डाउन एंड ओवर हियर वी हैवेंट यूज इफ एरो लेट सी द अदर फंक्शन ओवर हियर वी विल इंसर्ट द डेट्स The formula for first date will be totally different from rest of the dates, and the formula for first date will be plus or equal to date value bracket open double inverted comma one double inverted comma close, and we will select the month and we will select the year. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. We got a random figure over here. We'll right click the mouse, format cells. We'll take this up. we'll go to date and we'll select a desired date format and we'll do okay the cell size is smaller i'll increase the cell size and we got 4th january 2024 but we don't want month and year over here we just want a single digit or a single number like 01 02 and so on i'll select this we'll right click the mouse format cells we'll take this up we'll go to custom from here i'll delete general and we'll type dd means d two times and we'll do okay so we got 01 over here now we will insert the formula for second date and the formula will be plus or equal to if bracket open first date is smaller than eo month means end of the month bracket open we will select the first date once again will press function f4 and the cells will be logged comma 0 bracket close comma we will select the first date once again plus 1 comma double inverted comma twice bracket close and we will hit enter so we got our second date over here in the formula i had taken double inverted comma twice in the end the basic reason behind taking this the months which will have dates less than 31 it will be blank i drag this to right side and over here in the month of january we have got dates till 31st i'll come to the left and we'll change the month we'll do it february we'll come to right hand side and in the end you will notice after 29th it's blank we'll come to left hand side now we will see the function of date we'll right click over here just under date plus or equal to text bracket open value we will select our first date comma format text we will put double inverted comma d d d means d three times double inverted comma close bracket close and we will hit enter so we got thursday over here when we will change the month january in january first is monday in our function we had put d 3 times what will happen if we put d 4 times i'll add one more d over here and we'll hit enter so instead of m o n we got monday m o n d a y i'll undo this now i'll drag this to end we'll see we look up once again over here we will use we look up for holidays list plus or equal to we look up bracket open look up value we will take date as our look up value comma table ra we will be going to our setting sheet and over here we have got holidays list along with dates and holidays name we will select this from top we'll press function f4 and the cells will be logged comma column index number or column number dates are in column number 1 and holiday name is in column number 2 so we will type 2 over here comma 0 for exact match we'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter and we got name of first holiday over here what will happen if we will drag this to right we got some error because on these dates we haven't got any holidays so to avoid this error we will have to insert the criteria of if error i'll go to formula bar if error bracket open will come to the end comma double inverted comma twice because 
if there will be no holiday against these dates, we want it to be blank. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. Now we can drag this to right and the error got vanished. We'll drag this to extreme right side. Means till last date. Perfect. Now we will see conditional formatting. In conditional formatting, we will be using formulas to highlight the whole column. Even we will highlight single cells. I'll select this. We'll go to home, conditional formatting, new rule. From here, I'll select classic. And from here, I'll select use a formula to determine which cells to format. And our formula will be plus or equal to. We will select first day of the month. We'll delete first dollar from here is equal to. We are going to highlight our weekends. So I'll put double inverted comma SAT means Saturday, double inverted comma close, and we'll do OK. So our Saturdays got highlighted. But to make any format dynamic, we will do this in different way. We'll go to conditional formatting, manage rules. We'll click on our rule, edit rule. We'll delete Saturday from here. And we'll select this Saturday. Means whenever we will change day from here, it will be automatically captured over here in our data. We'll do OK. OK. So whenever we will change our days from here, we'll do it. Sunday and Sundays got highlighted. When we will do it Tuesday, our Tuesdays got highlighted. We'll keep it as Saturday. In the same way, we will highlight our Sundays also. We'll select our data. We'll go to conditional formatting, new rule, classic, use a formula to determine which cells to form. And the formula will be same. Only the cell reference will be totally different. Plus or equal to, we'll select first day. We'll delete first dollar is equal to we'll select second day from here and we'll do OK. So our Saturdays and Sundays got highlighted. In the same way, you can highlight your holidays also. Perfect. Let's come to right hand side. For present and leaves, we are going to use countif. Countif is one of the most important function of Excel. Plus or equal to countif bracket open. We'll come to left hand side. We'll select from first date till last date, comma, I'll come to right hand side. What we want to count over here, we want to count P, means present, double inverted comma, P, double inverted comma, close, bracket close, and we will hit enter. So we got zero over here. Let's put some P over here. And we got the count as five. In the same way, we can count all our leaves, holidays. For holidays, we are going to use two functions together. First will be count A and second will be count blank. So let's use count A first plus or equal to count A bracket open. We'll come to left hand side and we'll select all the holidays. We'll press function F4 and the cells will be logged. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. So we got 31 days over here. So this is what count A does. It counts all the things. Now we will use count blank over here. Minus count blank bracket open. We'll come to left hand side and we'll select from first holiday till last holiday. We'll press function F4 and the cells will be logged. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. So we got six holidays over here. So how this formula works? We had counted all the days of the month. Then we had subtracted all the blank cells and we got the number as 6. We'll drag this down. We will also drag this down. Weekoffs. For weekoffs, we will use two countifs in a single cell. Plus or equal to countif bracket open. We'll come to left hand side and we'll select all the days from 1st till 31st. We'll come to right hand side. We'll press function F4 and the cells will be logged. Comma. What we want to count over here? We want to count Saturday. Double inverted comma SAT. Double inverted comma close. Bracket close and we will hit enter. So we got four Saturdays over here. But our weekends are Saturday plus Sunday. So we will use one more count if in this cell. 
will copy our formula, control C or command C, we'll come to the end, plus we will paste our formula. From here, we will remove Saturday and we'll put Sunday, means S U N, and we'll hit enter. So we got eight week offs. When we will change the month, we'll do it as February. Let's check how many week offs we have got. We have got eight. Let's do it March. And in March, we have got 10 week offs. Means our formula is working perfectly. So we have seen count if, count A, count blank, and two count if in a single cell. Now we are going to see count for total active days plus or equal to count bracket open will come to left hand side and will select dates from 1st till 31st. We'll press function F4 and the cells will be locked. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. So we got total 31 days for the month. So total active days will be total days of the month minus holidays minus week offs. So we'll be going to formula bar minus holidays minus week offs and we'll hit enter. So we got total active days as 17. We'll come to left hand side. Now we will see how to highlight a single cell. Earlier we had highlighted the whole column. We'll select our data. We'll be going to home, conditional formatting, highlight cell rule equal to and over here I'll type P. I'll click on drop down and we'll select green fill with dark green text and we'll do OK. When we come to right hand side, all P's got highlighted in light green color. We'll go to conditional formatting once again, highlight cell rule equal to and this time I'll type PL means paid leave or privileged leave. We'll click on the drop down, customized format, fill and from here I'll select a desired color and we'll do OK. OK. So whenever I type PL over here, it will be highlighted in yellow. Now we will highlight our current date. We'll select the dates. We'll go to home, conditional formatting, highlight cell rule, equal to, and over here we will type is equal to today. T-O-D-A-Y today, bracket open, bracket close. We will click on the drop down, customized format, fill. We will click on the drop down and from here we will select a desired color and we'll do OK. OK. Today is 4th of January. So 4th got highlighted. When I'll open the sheet tomorrow means on 5th of January, 5th will be highlighted. Perfect. Let's come to left hand side. Now we will see how to use hyperlink. I'll insert few more sheets. So I've inserted six sheets for six months, January, February, March, April, May, and June. We will create hyperlinks and we'll connect all the sheets together. And through hyperlinks, we can jump from one sheet to another sheet just by a single click. We'll click over here. We'll go to insert shapes. And from here, I'll select a desired shape. We'll click over here and we'll resize the shape. We'll go to shape format and we'll change the color of the shape. We'll select red color from here. We'll double click on the shape and we'll type January. We'll go to home. We'll take this in center and in mid. We'll increase the font size. Now I'll press control and we'll drag this down. So two shapes got created. In the same way, by pressing control, we will create six shapes. So we got enough shapes for six months. We'll rename this as February, March, April, May and this will be June. We'll click on the month of February. We'll right click the mouse, hyperlink. Over here, we get three things web page or file, this document, and email address. We will click on this document. Over here, we are able to see name of the months from January till June. So we will select February from here and we'll do OK. We'll click on March, right click the mouse, hyperlink. Select March, OK. April, right click the mouse, hyperlink. We'll click over here and we'll go down and we'll select April. We'll do OK. May, right click the mouse, hyperlink. Go down and select May. 
and we'll select June also. Right click the mouse, hyperlink, come down and select June and do OK. So all the sheets got interconnected. Now we will connect January also because we forgot to connect January. We'll right click the mouse, hyperlink and we'll select January from here and we'll do OK. Now we will press Ctrl and we'll select all the shapes. In case you are using MacBook, you will have to press Ctrl plus Command. We'll copy this and we'll paste in all the months. So all the months got interconnected through hyperlink. Currently we are in the month of May. I'll click on June and we jump to the month of June directly. We'll click on February and we are in the month of February. In the same way, I'll click on January and January month is just in front of us. Now we will see how to use macros. I'll put some data over here. We'll drag this down. We'll copy this and we'll paste in all the months. So we have filled data in all the months. Now we will go in the month of January and we'll click just in front of first employee. We'll go to developer tab. On the left hand side, we get the option of record macro. We'll click over here. We'll delete macro one and we'll rename this as refresh data. Refresh underscore data. There should be no gap in the macro name and we'll do OK. So our recording started. We will select all the data from first till 31st and from first employee till last employee and we'll delete it. We are not going to delete the formulas. We'll come to left hand side and we'll click from where we started. We'll go to February and we'll delete the data. We'll click in front of first employee. We'll go to March. We'll delete data from here also, from first date till last date and from first employee to last employee. But never delete your formulas. Come to left hand side and click in front of first employee. In the same way, we will delete data from rest of the months. So all the data got deleted till June. We will come to the month of January and we'll click in front of first employee. Now we will stop recording the macros. The macros got recorded. We'll go to insert shapes and from here we will select the desired shape. We'll resize this. We'll put the name as refresh. We'll click on the shape. We'll go to home. We'll take this in center and in mid. We'll increase the font size and we'll change the font style. Perfect. So what to do with the macros which we have recorded right now? We'll click on the shape. We'll right click the mouse. Assign macro. And this is the macro what we have recorded right now. Refresh data. We'll select this and we'll do OK. I'll click outside the shape. Now when I'll come to the shape, you might notice a palm icon. Let's put some data over here once again. I'll copy this and we'll put in all the months. So all the months has got data now. We'll come to January and we'll see how refresh works. I'll click on refresh and the data from January got vanished. Let's check in rest of the months. February, no data. March, no data. April, data got erased. May also blank sheet and in June also there's no data. So this is how macros works. So by using these functions and formulas, you can create any format perfectly. I'm sure you must have loved the video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you soon with a new topic till then. Bye-bye.